You did it. No second verse. Got okay. It. Uh, we're going to bounce straight into it then. Uh, it at number one on the go fuck yourself list. It's the studio system. So we're covering a film that was made in the ass end of nowhere, not Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> Florida. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's that's we'll we'll get into it in a minute. I, I guess we'll do uh do introductions. It's Matt here. This is Luke. This is Mark. Uh Andrew. Andrew join uh, joining us as the man who only wants to join us for for quote unquote bad movies. Today's being 2000 Maniacs, which I can't find anyone who doesn't like this. I'll just go ahead and say it. Maybe well, it's cuz I live in the south. Luke might not like it. I don't know. <laughs> a niche. Oh, we'll get into it later. I, I thought I thought I was going to be coming in here saying I hated it, and then it grew on me eventually. Okay, <laughs> I, I was DMing Andrew before this, and we were saying like both of us like for Herschel Gordon Lewis, uh, the director of this film, his his Blood trilogy. This is the middle, and we were saying we we consider this movie better than Blood Feast, but we watch Blood Feast way more often. Yeah, uh, did you I... see this at my house, Matt? I'm, I'm uh, sure we, we watched this multiple times in the yeah, same my, my dad introduced me to blood feast and he brought home like the wizard of gore and 2000 maniacs but i didn't see some of the other ones uh until later but this was yeah this was one i saw as a kid yeah to this me one... this is uh blood feast is a more perfect and a more restrained film than this but this is having more fun i mean it's not a perfect analogy but you could say this is maybe the army of darkness of the, of the blood movies, perhaps the Evil Dead two of them. I don't. I don't know. Well, one thing I was watching because exploitation movies, you know, can drag. You know, you get like mm-hmm. two minutes of something great, and then like ten minutes of like people walking down hallways. And mm-hmm. last night I was like, this one's not paced that badly. It it does actually move pretty well. It's a good reason for that. Is because whatever direction was given to the Southerners, they were just complete. Ma- literal maniacs i mean there's this this is a movie about mania almost i don't (laughs) the i think the least accurate thing about this film is that southern people are depressed and move slowly (laughs) yeah i have trouble with the with the location this was filmed in uh, st cloud florida so it's hard for me not to think of florida and then be like what why the civil war i mean the union troops coming through there blah blah (laughs) Mm -hmm. being a history dork so yeah it's supposed to be in georgia but it, it looks like florida uh I, I, think, I love the probably apocryphal story that some of this was filmed on the future site of Walt Disney World. Um, <laughs> St. Cloud's very close uh, to Walt Disney World. I Google Earthed yeah. it right before he started, and I found the, the main street. It's still there, but half of it's under construction at this moment. And then there was a gun shop. <laughs> <laughs> well, from what I could look, from what I could look up, some of the buildings from this movie are still there as of whenever that was written. But yeah, I mean, I don't know. Maybe the swampland around there, or the, the tra- trails, could have ended up because you know. I like Disney to think plot. so. Yeah, I, I like so. to think so. Um, I mean, this is this city is sc- le- less scary than uh, Celebration. Yeah, me. and in some ways, and that's that's of course Disney's I mean, prefabricated the... city that they've abandoned and is now just as now it's just a b- bizarro town. I mean, in this there was a family annihilation there, so you know it's not a safe. What? Oh. A family, a family annihilator killed his family in celebration. So you know that happened. He killed his family in celebration. That's that's an interesting sentence. I guess that's kind of what happens it's a in this double movie. meaning. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 70... Well, no, it's not. This is strangers killing strangers. Seventy-five percent of this is Georgia boys. So yeah, we are holding with beta breath, Luke, on on the Englishman's thoughts on this deeply uh exploitation movie. Well, there were um. So the first thing I was thinking, this shows the big differences between America and the UK because there is no community this isolated in the UK because you can't get that far away from other people. The UK is not very big. So like the equivalent would be like the town in Hot Fuzz, right? But it's still actually only like a 10 minute drive to the next city. Whereas in America, you could genuinely be like very far from anything. So the idea that this little Hicksville community is out there, I guess, is slightly more like a real fear that people have, especially people not from the rural areas. And really, I think that contributes to why Southern people are depressed. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I I fully admit I have 
xenophobia really bad. Um, I I get whenever the street lights aren't there, whenever I'm seeing lots of cows, it just I mean because before I ever lived somewhere or went to any rural areas, I saw all the movies that show people going to those places and being murdered. <laughs> and so <laughs> by the time I started to encounter those places, I was already had a very healthy fear of those areas. Yeah, I guess I was a Boy Scout, so we'd already driven through half of these towns before I saw the movies. I We did at some point see someone playing a banjo on a porch, though. That, oh that did I, happen at one point. I did want to ask you, Matt, I've seen you play many different string instruments. Have you ever played a banjo? I've not played a banjo. Um, I I have a dobro, which is I guess a little more bluesy or whatever. But uh, no, I haven't. I haven't played a. Pro- I played a mandolin. Yeah, uh, I, Mark. Feel, I feel like you're betraying I... your. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is what happened when I played a banjo. I picked up a old, a former roommate of mine was playing in a uh, like a jug type band, and they had a banjo, and I played it, and I immediately was figuring out how to play like drone rock with it. So I was just misusing it immediately. That's kind of why I do the ukulele sometimes. Uh huh. <laughs> so I and mean, then I... the other big difference with the UK was they're celebrating their centennial. It's nothing in UK years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what was that like? Thirteen <laughs> fifty. <laughs> but uh, I was going to uh, say like this is sort of kind of not really, but sort of based on Brigadoon, and Brigadoon is a Scottish town. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think, but that's the Highlands of Scotland. So maybe you get like a little more, uh, uh, you can get a little more isolated there. I don't know. Am I wrong? Yeah, well, you, you can, you can get isolated in the UK. It's just, it's not actually as isolated as it is in the States. Also being a ghost like, town remember makes it more a isolated. Brit, <laughs> a Brit will say like, oh, that's too far away. I don't want to go. That's an hour away. Yeah, right. it's, um, yeah. And I think there, there is, well, I was, it was a weird thing. Last time I visited New York, I had a friend who was sort of in a different borough, and it was this thing where she was just like, nah, sorry, man, I don't have time to hang out with you. And mm. uh, I mean, realistically, we were probably like 20 miles away from each other, but it was just because there's endless traffic and you have to take the subway. And mm. now Atlanta has become like that, <laughs> where it takes an hour for me sometimes to drive 20 miles. Beastie Boys who have visited you, they I love all five boroughs. I can remember going like, oh, well, if Marta doesn't go there, then it must not be worth going to. I can remember thinking that. Yeah, and you know what? We have the same Marta now than when you lived here, as yeah. as when you lived here. It's just wild. Oh, boy. That being Atlanta's public transportation system, for those not in the know, it's, yeah. it's not a great one. It is the ninth largest in the country, and it doesn't really go much of anywhere. Like, if you want a good public transportation system in this country... You have to go to New York, Chicago, or maybe Boston, where basically there were six private systems that all went bankrupt, and the government bought them and merged them all together. Oh, oh. sounds fun. Capitalism want, or I was something. About to say yeah. If you want good public <laughs> public transport systems, get communism. Yeah, <laughs> I'm 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 on it. Gumbay. Red line, red line, or red line. Uh, <laughs> oh, the red line. Yeah. Okay. It's the red line. <laughs> Yeah, it's, we sorry, have a it took red a second. It's like a joke grenade, right? It took a second. Um, uh-huh. uh huh. I'm gonna quickly do the story here, just uh, for for the for the folks' benefit. Three automobiles with six Yankees are detoured into the backwoods Georgia town of Pleasant Valley. They're gonna be guests for the town centennial celebration. The guests are treated to a barbecue, a horse race, a dunking contest, and an axe murder. Turns out all of these are fatal. Pleasant Valley was destroyed by Union forces in the Civil War, and the ghosts are out for revenge against them damn Yankees. The last two, Tom and Terry, escape the town and alert the local authorities. But there's nothing but swamp there now. The ghosts of Pleasant Valley have gone back to sleep for another hundred years, looking forward to hooting and hollering bicentennial. Okay. (laughs) That was a couple of accents. Yeah, I know. I I, wanna, I definitely threw some Cajun in there somewhere. <laughs> Still better than well, a lot of the ones in the movie. <laughs> yeah, true. Florida is a melting pot, isn't it? I, uh, um, and, and, and a melting pot of swamp scum. <laughs> yeah. 
it um, is funny. Uh, one of the things I love the most about this film is because, you know, they did the, the citizens of St. Cloud were like invited to be like extras and stuff. And sometimes you see the old woman who's kind of smiling and kind of like, what have I gotten myself into? <laughs> that might be my favorite part of the movie. There, uh, during the, the rock dunk, and I guess it's a dunking contest. That's what I called it. Like there's one lady standing there just like, Arr. I mean, again, she's a maniac, so it's fine. But yeah, so- sometimes there's an old lady standing there who looks genuinely horrified. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's trying to smile, but she's horrified. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> worked. The, th- the thing I love about this is that this movie the most is this just basically a Bugs Bunny cartoon. What if there were like 30 Bugs Bunnies and they all were intent on murder? So that gets <laughs> Pretty much to my it. point because the first kill of the film where they just hack that woman with the axe was just genuinely unpleasant. Like she's kicking and screaming. They get her, the look on her face, all of it. I was like, Oh, this is just horrible. I'm not going to like this film. This is like, um, we're in like human centipede two territory again. And then the next one is the horse hand drawing and quartering, which now in context, I get it. But again, at the time, it's just like, that is a real horrible way we used to kill people. That's like how William Wallace died, I think. But then it's like putting them in a barrel full of spikes and dunking them <laughs> with a rock and stuff. And I'm like, oh, okay, I get it now. This is funny. Why did they start with the realistic horrendous <laughs> death before we get into the Bugs Bunny shit? Just give me more of that. It, yeah, that was is... why I had a real turn on this film when I was like, oh, I get what they're going yeah. for now. But the first two did not give me this. Well, I think that first kill is more like a Blood Feast style kill. Those, you know, mm-hmm. people that had seen Blood Feast would be expecting that. And Wizard of Gore is kind of similar in that regard. There's a lot of just very matter of fact hack up sort of mm. kills. That I guess from a creative. film writing perspective, it'd be kind of like, we well, need to amp it up. So we'll have like plain Jane murders and then get weird. Yeah, but I, yeah, it's that... just the film is like, oh, this is a bit fun and wacky. Here's a really horrible scene of a woman dying. Now we're back to fun and whack. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> See, well, this is uh, this is a weird one for our modern sensibilities, I think, because much like in Blood Feast, as far as I can recall, like there aren't really any unlikable people getting killed here. <laughs> These are pretty much regular mm. people who are not jerks. And I think, I think kind of to its credit, because I, I think if you want the people to die, too much then it's maybe makes you feel a little bit gross to watch it well the first two are shown to be cheating on each other so that's to give them the horror movie trope of they slightly deserve to die the other couple yeah the the one that gets see the more imaginative deaths are the nicer couple i guess and we don't actually figure out how they're gonna off uh uh tom and terry do we no no that's but disappointing. I don't know. You could say that they get away because they're the only people who were not having sex with each other, maybe. But but they were. The they were married. Ran out, they ran out. I mean, of in ideas. real life, no, were, he's a yeah. yeah. In real life, they are married. That's what in I'm real saying. life, Sorry. yes. And you could tell they had a definite people who had been having sex chemistry. All William Kerwin got him a Playboy bunny. Good for it. Good for him. Um. <laughs> It was fun. I went down the rabbit that hole. That is very surprising movies. to me because I was thinking, wow, there's a big difference in how attractive these two people are. <laughs> <laughs> that Billy Joel thing. Yeah. It was fun going down the rabbit hole of their IMDb because they had two two children, both which became actors, and all of them were in like weird, like schlocky mystery movies and made for TV Ooh, stuff. That's awesome. So it's kind of a cool lineage there but i mean that's a great how i met your mother story we we were in blood feast and 2000 maniacs mm-hmm. together <laughs> <laughs> yeah that would be so awesome actually to be the kid who's got to say that about the parents child of blood feast right. <laughs> so was your mom a good actor uh, uh... <laughs> she, might, she might have been underutilized but you know she did her best um, yeah, Herschel Gordon Lewis said if you want her to act, you turn the key in her back. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, so how about, I guess we should go sort of chronologically. I I find it so hilarious and likable how Herschel Gordon Lewis just does the lead vocal on the uh, theme song where he just sort of says, just sort of talks. He doesn't really sound like a Southerner at all. Just Robert E. Lee broke a musket on his name. <laughs> um, that's always fun when he decides to 
Now, I need listen. to know who does the completely unhinged yeehaw. Because that just the like band. That that's a good yeehaw. I think that they're one all in him. the background. All of it's him. He's overdubbed himself. Well, what okay. I was is telling it? you is that in Godfather of Gore, correct me if I'm wrong, Mark, I know you saw this because uh, we we were at the same screening of it, I think. When it came out, but, uh, I did. <laughs> yeah. Um, so at the end of Godfather of Gore for the credits, this is a documentary about Herschel Gordon and Lewis. Um, he's shown at a some sort of jamboree um, where they had screened 2000 Maniacs and he's performing the song. And he does all the yeehaws. I mean, he's really going for it. Okay, because that's definitely yeah, the most did. intense yeehaw. Because there's like three yeehaws, and the one in the background is the most unhinged. Yeah, but one sounds like Alvin and the Chipmunks. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's mixed it up a little. He's very confident. I mean, I, I love any of the trailers where he does voiceovers for his own trailers, like the trailer <laughs> for the film Something Weird, where every once in a while there's just out of nowhere something weird <laughs> i've had trouble retracking down that film in the uh even in this this internet digital era um, i think i have it i'll see if i can i have it, it but it's in america at my parents place i do have the disc oh. still but yeah i can't really get hold of that so easily um well if you ever yeah, want you your parents to those. give it to me just mm. let them know right <laughs> <laughs> sentences to take out of context <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we make our super hey, <laughs> it's like I'm part of the family. <laughs> Not Doc. Uh, your son said I could have something weird. <laughs> yeah. Get Flat and strange. Well, that that does sound like that. Five inch. It's five inch. Five inches. <laughs> <laughs> that's how. That's how wide a disc is. It's five inches. So I guess they wouldn't take Steve Martin to the horse races. I mean, he's he's a, he's a Yankee boy, but he can play the banjo real well. I wonder if this town would forgive no. me for playing the banjo no. real well. No, they no, wouldn't. they'd kill you. They'd They're kill too you. maniacal. Yeah, they don't care. They don't Bugs care. Funny doesn't are. care. Yeah, they do That's not Southern care. cultural appropriation. That right. was the big kind of thing when I was watching it. Is that you know when one sees a Confederate flag, let alone uh, hundreds, two thousand. Yeah. Um, one is inclined to just start running in the opposite direction of said flags. Mm. And I was thinking like, well, what in the world would have possessed those people to just be like, oh, this is cool. We'll just hang out and celebrate with them. Other than being white and being like, oh, I'm sure we're fine because we're white. Matt, in your notes, you mentioned that a little bit. Uh, I wrote everyone who lives in Georgia as a Confederate. Yeah. And then, then I, I wrote something about, oh, uh, let's see. Blah, 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 blah. Like Why something to the effect of they were it. safe because they were also white people. Oh, well, that's what they would assume. Yeah. And that's, yeah. you know, I guess it's like that early 60s vibe. You did they We just had, I guess, just had the whole, you know, Camelot thing. So uh, with mm -hmm. the Kennedys and yeah, everything was just, very white at the time. Don't know. They just don't know. I, I uh, would assume that the conversation around like how messed up all the stuff is was way far in the back of <laughs> I don't I don't feel like that even started here in Atlanta until like the 90s. Till I was in high school where some of us were like, wait, this is kind of messed up. Like I, <laughs> I didn't really hear that conversation until like 1992 two or something i mean it's like i yeah. it's like i understood in the back of my head that it was messed up but definitely none of us grew up knowing knowing that um all those like confederate monuments were built in the 50s like yeah it was a response so to the civil rights movement yeah and they absolutely the, no way i they thought put that, the confederate battle flag on the state flag in the 50s too which we grew up with that no on, idea that was on the state flag to what 1997 Look, have we yeah, mentioned and then this they to changed you before? It to you mentioned that to else. me, yeah. But I, okay. you, I, this idea that I didn't know that it started in the fifties. I'd assumed it was on there because it had been there for ages. So nope. that's all news to me. Well, that's nope. what they wanted us to all think, and we did because they just nobody talked about it, and that's so it, why people were like, "Oh, wait a minute, we've used the internet to figure out that this is messed up, and we're going to take these statues down," even though it still took a really long time for that to happen. So when they right. did that on the flag, it literally was a fuck you. It was. Yeah. Uh-huh. Wow. That's that's cuckoo cuckoo. Yeah. Awful. And and let's um, not forget uh Tom I said Tom, but his name is Miss Tom White. He's Mr. White. I'm like, okay. 
Okay. That's on the <laughs> well, nose a bit. <laughs> the middle name is. And they they can only drink white lightning in this town. That's all I you see get to drink. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Makes you go I blind. Don't... Um Yeah, this is this is a really weird depiction of Southerners because I feel like the real reaction, if this was sort of realistic, which why would it be? That wouldn't be an exploitation movie. It was realistic, but there's a lot of kind of just being really quiet and assessing the situation. And then uh, they'll tell, they'll say something racist once they feel like they're comfortable with you. Mm. And that's more like yeah. what these people are like. Um, there's yeah, a the, big, um... it's a big undercurrent of Southerners love to sit back and watch you underestimate them and then stab a dagger in your back later. Not literally. <laughs> no, they they literally much. hack you with an axe. The, the, uh, yeah. the bless your heart thing. This is a sort of a version of that, but you, are you familiar with that phrase, Luke? Bless your heart. Where it's usually I mean, I'm familiar with the phrase, but okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't it's usually meant passive about. aggressively. It's like you can, you say bless your heart where it really means fuck you. Oh uh, yeah. Well, <laughs> sort of. To me, it's used sort of like patronizingly. That's pretty much that yeah, too. That's, that's that too. It. It's uh, a it's a big, like sort of sit back and watch all these people hmm. who we don't like and don't trust underestimate us, and then we'll get them later, which is a bad policy for you know. And, and it may again feed into that all of us are very isolated. Hmm. Well, it's a, the genre is called hick exploitation, uh, mm -hmm. and I wonder how this played in places like florida and in georgia and in tennessee and alabama um whether they were rooting for the people <laughs> of pleasant valley <laughs> or not you know because they had to have gone wait a minute now, <laughs> now that people are like killing exactly. other people <laughs> that'd be funny if somebody like was <laughs> he's that guy's just like my daddy <laughs> that it would be funny if like people were like I don't know if I like being represented like this. I feel like that was, that probably wasn't a whole lot of people's mind. But My you know, daddy uh, killed eight Yankees. Yeah, all of us uh, gr growing up in Atlanta, it's been more and more, more and more the case where we're separated from anything like that, and they would be more likely to kill us than to kill Yankees. Yeah. Um, when I got to the Athens. State... They told me I was not from Atlanta. I was not from the huh? South because I was from the Atlanta area. They said that's not actually Weird. the South. That's what I was told. That's weird. Yeah, it's but the state intentionally cuts off funding. Hey, remember Marta? What we were talking about earlier? It's the only like transit system that doesn't get state funding, or it's the largest one that doesn't get state funding. Um, they are trying to kill us. They are trying to take our use the cash cow that we provide, and then they're trying like, to take our trains. Much. They're taking our trains. <laughs> so this is all metaphor. This two thousand maniacs business. Yeah, th there's no public oh. transportation in Pleasant Valley or St. No. Cloud. No. Although, although just... Disney World now has like like these weird like hanging car things. That sounds kind of cool. Well, yeah, you can always that... count on Disney for socialism. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, Luke, does it's... that mean that um you think that this that the most horrible death out of all the creative deaths? wouldn't even call it creative but that's that um that initial axe murder well it's a a thumb gets cut off mm. and then um they chop off her arm while she's still alive yeah and then they just go about go about then hacking her up are you are we saying are we all do we all agree that that's the most horrible death in the movie oh well, god part yeah of, part of why that's horrible is because right when they cut her arm off it transitions it cuts to it being a like a mannequin yeah. So that that's like you're watching the life drain out of a person instantaneously, which is uh, upsetting. Oh, geez, I didn't even think about that. Thanks. See, see Luke, I thought you'd be <laughs> happy because she gets her arm cut off and she's like instantly dead. There's no like, oh, my God. Oh, yeah, I yeah. love that. It's upsetting. <laughs> <laughs> well, you were just saying last week you don't like it when someone's like gets their arm cut off and they have to live and think about it. So. Oh, yeah, but you still she still was very aware of what was happening to her. <laughs> that's true. But but yeah. yeah you can get that in Green Inferno. There's a guy that's just hacked up and, uh, yeah, definitely still wriggling and screaming. I guess The Rock would be a little more likely to cause an instant fatality, but yeah. Well, now uh, when the arm comes off, it is is it the? I know it's it's supposed to be her right arm, but did they pull the left arm off of her? Did anyone notice? I didn't pay that I much attention. Not. Was it a left mannequin arm? <laughs> <laughs> I hope it was. 
I hope it was too. She is all thumbs. I don't know. Well, no, she wasn't <laughs> at that point, was she? <laughs> nope. One thumb. Nope. Oh, yeah. But guys, give me your hand. <laughs> Who thought that um the fake southern accent that Bill Kerwin used on the phone was better than the uh supposedly real southern accents of the people of Pleasant Valley? I kind assume of. I assume the people of St. Cloud were trying to do the Georgia variety, and since they are living in Florida, they may have had some issue with that. Whereas a real yeah. actor like Bill Kerwin, he can do it, you know. You know he's yeah. a master of all accents, perhaps. I don't know. Yeah, he was yeah I couldn't Florida. do a Florida accent for you. It's, it's very different. What is a Florida accent? It's kind of more like they dress slower. What? what? <laughs> <laughs> you no, know, you know, it's sort of like you have to put go more into your head. It's sort of more like more like this. Like, like the, the heat has melted their brain a little more. It's like nerdier somehow. <laughs> like in Spring how... Breakers? Kind of. Yeah. I mean, you know. That's the Florida movie to me is Spring Breakers. That's, that is the best Florida movie. Yeah. I rewatched that recently. Still fantastic film. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> fantastic film. Be- even yeah. better than this film. But anyway. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. Yeah. Giving it, giving it those, those kudos. It's so good, dude. It's so good. This 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 is gonna de evolve with like Luke staring at us as we all like speak in like ridiculous accents. I, I've understood like half of what you guys have talked about so far. <laughs> well, just be glad we don't have Florida or Georgia accents. Then it'll be harder. Well, I just I you would like not have Georgia accents. I have don't, don't I have turn into a... Americans on me and say I don't have an accent. I have just a mutt <laughs> accent that's made up of a bunch of different shit, partly because I listened to a bunch of rap when I was a kid and adopted partially a New York accent and then partially a, just a neurotic person accent. And uh, yeah, I don't know. No, My accent I don't know what I am. Out of all of us, I've definitely got the Southern accent for sure. Mm. Probably so. Yeah. I, I think I got handed the the Delaware Philly accent for the most part. Yeah, yeah you, nobody... you would pass for nor- Northeastern or better than the other two of us. Yeah, the maniacs would take me right out. I mean, so, uh, um, I, I would like as... to. No, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, I'd like to have seen the conundrum if they did have to decide whether or not to kill like a guy from Atlanta in this movie. <laughs> like, that would <laughs> well, have been kind of fun. We're trying to kill a guy going to Atlanta. Yeah. Yeah, that's not the same thing, is it, though? He's got to get to the teacher's convention. Wife. What if Mr. they found White that his last name were te- White? Like, I don't know. His last name's White. I don't know if we should kill him. <laughs> <That's>, that would, <laughs> well, Luke, what if you, what if you found yourself in a, what if you found yourself driving through a town where you saw all of these Confederate flags? Like, what would be, I is have. there no equivalent to like, uh, what would be considered like red flag? Like, don't stop here, keep driving? Mm, the, the closest would be like an English flag. So not the Union Jack, the one that's just the Red Cross. Right. But it's not it's not a sure thing. It might just be because there's levels of being like a nationalist, right? Because people can just be a bit, you know, obnoxiously into the queen or whatever without being a full on. Like racist xenophobe. Right. Um, But yeah, these days, especially, I think if I see too many English flags, it's a bit of a bit off putting. Hmm. Um, But then like also just. Sometimes you just see a swastika, man. <laughs> Is that right? Sometimes there's a swastika. What? Like less and less, but yeah, like especially in like um back in the sixties, like during punk. Mm-hmm. Obviously that's where you know Nazi punk's fuck off comes from. Yeah. Like, well, there was a big upset there was people. a big fascist. Some of them were. Oh. But then also, also there was just a lot of actual Nazis, right? <laughs> oh, you <laughs> You talk to other punks and it's like, yeah, the Nazis come into your bar, you beat the shit out of them because you don't want them to think that's okay. <laughs> right, they're in the red suspenders or the... Yeah, it's yeah. Like the like, or like the Wild Angels, right? They're a motorcy- murderous motorcycle ban- uh, ban- gang and they love displaying swastikas, but they don't... It's a, like a fashion yeah. choice because it's 1966. Absolutely a thing. I, d- I don't think this is a thing anymore, but at least when I was growing up, People would just have swastikas just to to shock people. Like yeah, I knew there was a guy a bit, who... <laughs> there was a bit of that when I was a teenager. Yeah, I knew a guy who just wore a Nazi armband to a Halloween party because he thought it would be funny. Was he a prince? And a oh, lot God. of people were not amused by it at all. 
<laughs> I don't think that he intentionally was like, hey, man, Heil Hitler, what's up? <laughs> you know, I, I really think he was just trying to just be unpleasant at, for a laugh. Well, the town well, of Pleasant I mean, Valley owns their flags. We will say that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's there's a place in uh, Cornelia, Georgia. It's called the Rebel Shop. For all your racist needs. I mean, it's it's all Confederate flag stuff. And yeah, you know, I went. Um, you, Andrew, you probably know about this, Matt. You may not, but the guy in Kennesaw who died recently, who had the. Uh, basically whatever confederate racist shop um i went with friends of mine to get stuff for their for their like biker exploitation movie dear god no and they were just trying to get like some just nazi shit for their bikers to wear because they're basically like bad bad guys and i was like sure i'll come with you this play and it was horrible and it was not pleasant <laughs> and i hmm. wish i hadn't gone um, was it like falling down that guy's gun shop or what was it? A um, army surplus in that movie? Yeah, it's basically army surplus. The guy's name was Wild Man, but basically, the interesting thing to me, which shouldn't be surprising, is that the whole time we were there, he was just like talking to a couple people, and he came across as the most boring person I'd ever listened to speak. Um, <laughs> the guy who used to own Book Nook was basically the same way. Like yeah. he was sort of a known right wing troll. And whenever you'd go in there, he'd just be like, well, I'm talking like this. He'd be talking somebody's ear off and just incredibly boring the whole time. So he didn't, they didn't show you to their secret room. That's only for people that are like nudge, nudge, wink, wink, Nazis. Dude, I saw I things think, in the you don't open need a ass room area. These days. <laughs> no, no not, not uh, in these the open days, ass like area <laughs> that were like bumper stickers you could buy right out off the shelf that you put on your car that were fucking awful and made me feel gross. So yeah, I don't I don't yeah. want to know if there's a secret area. No, Luke's right. It's like, hey, does it do you have a secret sane person's room I could adjourn myself to? Yeah. <laughs> secret room's got Zed in it. Oh my it's God, got like right. it's got a swastika that's made out of dicks or something. <laughs> like it's got. <laughs> oh geez, look where it's we're got at. Like, with this. It's got. <laughs> it's got a guy who's. It's got an effigy of a of a fake man being hanged while he's trying to burn a swastika. I don't know. Oh I'm God. just trying to think of what's the most racist thing I can think of. I don't know. <laughs> there don't goes know. the family show rating. <laughs> I, it's um, not. I think the, no like the third the third word I said was fuck. So <laughs> yeah, this is the fuck this is the fuck podcast. We this is the fuck show. I never show. remember. Welcome to the fuck show. The episodes you're yeah, not on, Andrew. We just we just hardcore have sex. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> Over God, Zoom. No wonder I don't get invited to any of these things. <laughs> well, yeah. okay, so they I'm assuming no one's talking about human centipede. <laughs> No one saw Tim Sullivan's uh, 2001 Maniacs? I did. I, I saw it mentioned on the Wikipedia, but no. Okay. Mark I saw it, it at so... the drive-in. Uh, it was it was okay. I don't know. I only saw it the one time, but I thought it was all right. It was maybe a so, little bit dramatic. Yeah. I mean, you you they just they want to update the special effects mostly. Um, Robert England was the uh, the the guy. The yeah. The mayor. The mayor uh, or whatever. He did it. He did a great job, yeah. but it was sort of like they were really focused on making him like a very physical monster, you know, yeah. <laughs> which is kind yeah. of kind of kind of not anything like this movie, but it was I thought it was perfectly enjoyable. So my question in the room is uh what would what would the Jordan Peele version of 2000 Maniacs be? Man, it uh, wouldn't have to be that different. I think be... that the the way you would do a twist on it would be so this film, you arrive, it's like a southern town and there's um, Confederate flags everywhere. You're immediately on edge, right? I think the Jordan Peele version, it would be a, the kind of community that the white audience doesn't think there's anything up. Uh-huh, right. Asheville. Yeah, and then then you re like, reveal it. like a layer underneath. <laughs> gotcha. So yeah, like there'd be a suburb yoga and and stuff. Suburb, there's yeah. a community center. Yeah, Yeah, where they think, where they... They give the impression that, like, no, 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 we're fine, we're very inclusive, whatever, and then, like, under the surface, they end. So pretty much like Get Out, just yeah, a little wider scope. Oh, yeah. So Get I, Out. I immediately want to see this. Yeah, this all sounds good. 
Hey, um, yeah, 2001 that. Maniacs. The the one thing I felt that was really missing from this movie was Clint Howard. Does he show up in 2001 Maniacs by chance? I don't think so. No, that's too bad. So. Okay, was, I mean he was too young. The Ice Cream Man. There yeah, was, was a sequel to 2001 Maniacs. I don't. I saw it on IMDb, but I've never seen it. Is it called 2002 Maniacs? That's my question. Unfortunately, no. <laughs> ah, disappointing. Yeah. <laughs> They can't count over 2001. Uh, 2001 Maniacs. 2001 Maniacs Field of Screams, which is very that's original. Pr- that's fun. I like it. Uh, <laughs> um, this this one, uh, Bill Mosley is the mayor. Oh, nice. I like Bill also, Mosley. Hey, Lynn Shea is in it, too. Ooh, I Lynn love Lynn, Lynn Shea. Shea. Ahmed Best, Jar Jar Binks is in it. Sweet. <laughs> that's an interesting career yeah. turn. Yeah. <laughs> Misa gonna die. <laughs> I oh, hope he says man. that. <laughs> Luke, were you there last week when our coworker James, because uh, my arms were freckly and we were at the beach, he's like, "Your arms look like Jar Jar Binks." Probably because yeah, I was yeah, also yeah. wildly throwing them around. You do, you do oh. have a bit of Binks on. Okay. <laughs> Binks on. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. I just How before is this a thing? <laughs> before we move on, I just have to say the tagline from 2001: Field of Screams is, "If they kill you, they will come." Oh my god! <laughs> so wait, how can we see this one? I gotta look this up. Um, I, usually I don't. find it. I feel like there's no version of actually seeing this film that's going to be as good as the one we're creating no, in our heads, though. No, probably not. No, that's great. Uh, 2010. <laughs> so, uh, Canopy for free, which is like a library thing. Yeah, yeah. Canopy with a K. A, yeah, we have an educator's account. The annual right. Guts and Glory you can Jamboree. Educate wow. yourself about the about the maniacs. The maniacs. Yeah, that happened in 2010. <laughs> the screaming fields. Yeah, so five. Screaming fields. Oh, Hirsch Gordon Lewis was the executive producer. Oh, I'm excited oh. about that. Cool. Yeah. Um, not to sound too coarse, but is he still alive? <laughs> no, no, he died. A oh, while okay, ago. okay. That was 2010. Yeah. So I guess there's he had a, bit a of... good run. Though. Yeah, I yeah. Mean, he made it to like ninety something. Mm-hmm. I mean, Roger Corman is still kicking, and Mel Brooks. It's like, how are those guys? I mean, I'll be sad when I hear they die, but <laughs> at the same time, it's like, how do they make it that old? They had. I mean, I, I would guess Herschel Gordon Lewis's filmography didn't pay the same way as those guys have. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't have those connections. You got to remember, Hersh spent the, the majority of his career not making movies, but becoming uh i think he invented junk mail he was a direct marketing master uh, i have one of his books upstairs that's <laughs> just about how to write ad copy <laughs> <laughs> i i do appreciate his workmanship the, the whole thing it's just, just that you know that you do all the voiceovers that wasn't there one movie where he just showed up in a must with a fake mustache or something i i can't remember all the stuff from the documentary did, because yeah, there's so he much did live, he did live to see uh, to to you know to be celebrated as the Godfather of Gore, yeah. So he did. He was able to enjoy that at the end of his life, uh, being appreciated for his contributions to film. Because when Matt and I were kids watching these, this was very clearly uh, some bottom of the barrel stuff, <laughs> and we thought it was yeah. hilarious. Get off my lawn! I'm the Godfather <laughs> of Gore. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was mean, thinking if they, they had can... like a cape form, like James Brown. If they can make a documentary about you and it's compelling to watch all the way through and there's nothing about you like falling down a horrible drug pit or anything like that, then you probably had a pretty interesting life. Yeah. I mean, the box set of Herschel Gordon Lewis's movies, I've got it upstairs. Um, It's wonderful. I mean, it's one of the coolest box sets that I own. It's fantastic. He made a lot more movies than I thought he did. Um, And uh, Dave Friedman also um, super entertaining guy and I uh, I got his book as well because he started out in the carnivals and so between Herschel Gordon Lewis Dave Friedman and Mike Vrainy from something weird I mean this you're talking about movies that a style of making movies that just doesn't exist anymore if anyone's doing it it's they're doing it on purpose but these yeah. guys arrived at it honestly these guys had I mean, to do one take because film costs money yeah <laughs> Yeah, it's like my favorite movie of his is probably just for the hell of it, which is now I have to say problematic fave because it has some pretty bad oh, stuff in it. But it does. 
the general thrust of it, which is just teenagers smash things. Yeah. <laughs> That's the opening scene for ten what ten minutes to the song destruction. That's great. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. My favorite is Scum of the Earth, and that one's super, super, super gross in terms of not gore, but you know, just really yeah. awful behavior from Scummery. Yeah. Yeah. It's make your skin crawl and not in a normal horror movie way. This this being the films and filth podcast, we gotta put a label on it. And I feel like it's a disservice to this movie not to put a big proud filth label on it. <laughs> it is definitely filth, but it has it has a child. Intentionally so. Yeah. Yeah. You know, right. you went these guys were making nudist camp movies and they were just like, what's gonna sell? And instead of, you know, uh T and A, it's B and G, you know. It sounds less alluring when you say B and G. Okay. <laughs> Blood <laughs> und guts. I was trying to think of a, a different thing I can make B and G stand for, and all I got was boobs oh. and <laughs> groins. What? Balls groins. and gooch. Bull, boob, oh my boobs God, and groins. gonads. <laughs> Maybe that's that's when yeah, when we got a lot of uh dudes swinging it on the screen. You can call it that. Yeah. <laughs> Magic Mike oh gives God. you a lot of that. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how much but, on-screen balls and gooch there is in Magic Mike. I think it's more just like abs and stuff. That was just the first thing that came to mind. But I mean, a TNA. I mean, a lot of TNA there's doesn't actually, actually show good. you nip. You know, it's yeah. just uh, like TV. I'm, TNA is just like enticing you, but doesn't give you anything. Yeah, like, I just, I've I'm, never seen. Sorry, I've never but, seen a Magic Mike movie, but the one just came out that was called like Magic Mike: The Last Dance, and I'm sort of hoping that he just like dies on a stripper pole. Those movies are good. People <laughs> don't realize that that they're Steven Soderbergh. They're still good movies. Like really. Oh, I'm really, sure they are. I like seen um, any of them, so I'm not going to judge. But yeah. Yeah, better right. Uh, have they're better than someone would think, but you got to remember the, who, who's making them. I mean, he that's a great director. But I, I every time you guys come at me with these movies that are at the bottom of the IMDb rating, I'm just like, they have the value of them. It's like I wouldn't be interested in them and I wouldn't have watched them. I definitely wouldn't own them if they didn't have some sort of value. Um, the 2000 Maniacs is one of the original gore movies. People with in horror that didn't exist in the United States in terms of American horror. People were really seeing this stuff for the first time. And, uh, you know, it was making people puke and, you know, all of this stuff. And, uh, you know, for my dad was born in 50. So he was in his teens when he was seeing these kind of things in the drive-in and they thought these were horror movies were made for kids. So can you imagine <laughs> the whole family goes to 2000 maniacs thinking it's going to be a Vice <laughs> or, you know, or a universal or a Bela Lugosi type picture. And here they are with this, the, the scene that Luke described. <laughs> yeah. That sounds like a good lead up to a 10 star review. If y'all want to, this is a five. Oh, I was going to ask actually, so it's not bottom Matt. of the barrel. Oh yeah. That's what I was going to yeah, ask. No, Why does this actually fit? on the list because that's not where we got it from it's it's closer to the top ones than it is to the bottom ones this is 4.2 rating by the way so wait what it's mine says 5.8 oh really what's going on maybe um you're right so few ratings that it can change that quickly i expect (laughs) no no you're you're correct it's a bad rating i'm thinking of something else okay um Uh, so i i'm gonna read a 10 though uh I mean, I could read a bad one too, but I, this one's fun. I'll find a bad one if you find okay. a good one. I, I found a good one. This one's great. Okay, good. This Wait. one's a... yeah. The South will rise, but I'm gonna go and rise some weights at the gym. Okay, later. Right. Peace. Yeah. So here's your ten for you. This one's a barrel of lurid laughs by Weirdling Wolf. A majestic movie malignancy of arbitrary corpse-making cruelty, swordly slash and savagery, bellicose, bodily, bludgeonous deaths, exquisitely deliberate eviscerations, violently disgorging, glissy entrails, calamitously corrupting, cranial crushing carnage, galloping gouts of gelatinous gore, fearlessly filtering femoral, femoral arteries, and it's it's going to go through most of the alphabet here. Like good old Smiler here, I got me an axe to grind house. This heroically horrible H.G. Lewis classic swells my gore gland to an eerie conniption fit. Why I settle for just one flaccidly flaying mask wearing mummies boy when y'all could have 2,000 maniacs. This one's a barrel of lurid laughs. Get it? <laughs> Holy shit. All right. I'm going to go on with the tradition of 
reading things I don't agree with that are unlikable. Okay. One out of ten. The League of the South could have made this film by M. Brahms 26. An incoherent plot, atrocious acting, amateurish directing, and tons of sadi- sorry, lots of sadistic gore. Some of it is quite misogynistic as two attractive young women are tortured and terrorized while screaming in terror while being before being horribly killed in drawn out scenes. The only positive aspect of the film from a male point of view is the nice eye candy, especially Linda Cochran and Marilyn Mason. Two out of four found this helpful. So it's basically, hey, it's misogynistic. Hey, it's check out these women from their eye candy. (laughs) (laughs) But it's a misogynistic review. Mm. Yep. Uh huh. <laughs> what a uh huh. Maybe the maybe the misogynistic was brought up as a positive in their review. Yeah, yeah. maybe. <laughs> that would, I would explain that. I mean, I guess they do have a Playboy bunny, but there's not. Uh, again, this isn't really a TNA. They didn't this name is a, this, the B and G. No, if you're here. Uh, anyways, gee, the more you say it, the more it seems it sounds right. Okay. This, B&G. this person has written a lot of a lot of reviews. Actually, it's kind of interesting. Mine only they, got mine had, Star Trek things. Mine had zero out of one finding it helpful. I I, I thought they put some <laughs> effort into that when I read. So, oh, yours yeah. was yeah. good. Yeah. Um, All the, 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 they reviewed Star Trek the motion picture. It says at least they ripped off the plot of a great season two episode. Zero out of six. Users. I'm going way too deep into this. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. Well, we, we, we always, I mean, we can't get through an episode without bringing up Trek or Star Wars, right? Oh, we already got Binkson, so I guess we did that. Binks yep. arm. <laughs> Misa gonna be killed by Southerners. Oh my God. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Maybe the whoever killed Jar Jar Binks in the movies was from Southern Tatooine. I don't know. Well, we were younger. Stuff somebody's balls in a Jar Jar. <laughs> When we were younger, I guess my head was slightly weird looking, and, and Andrew thought it was going to grow into a bit Fortuna eventually. Wow. I didn't say that, did I? Yeah, you did. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. Well, I guess it's Fortunet for you that it didn't. For, Fortunet. Okay, Fortunet. that works. That works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> weird. Oh, boy. I'm getting a Facebook call from Malik Muhammad. That's what that was. Oh, I get okay. Facebook calls from one exactly one friend of mine, and I feel bad because I can never answer them because I'm doing something. Well, oh, well. Malik is usually just going, I hate every white person except you, Andrew. <laughs> I'm like, mm, good. Don't, don't, okay. don't tell him to watch this movie. <laughs> I don't know. I, don't know. I feel gotten... like this would reinforce that. Yeah, no. No, imagine <laughs> you just had black people as the ones stopping in uh, Pleasant Valley. Well, that see that was yeah. Sad, like you're asking probably. about Jordan Jordan Peele. You can't do that because that's just full on. Oh God, no! Why don't show me this? You know? Yeah. Like that What's just that? doesn't work at all. Like that's why we're saying. Well, I guess it would have to be a suburb with yoga and stuff, right? So, or you could, or you could just do the entire town is black and they're all black Confederates, which would be weird. But I, and I don't know if that would be funny or weird or tragic or what. That would that's a, that's a weird idea. It's not yeah. it's not impossible, of course. No, I have, I um, I what when do Herschel Gordon Lewis's enter the public domain? When do his movies enter the public domain? I think these are because well, it's been fifty years. It's 50 that might be music though. Oh, okay. I was just gonna say, you know, uh, when people are trying to remake movies. You know, take the ones that definitely could use an update and do something creative with it. Mm. Uh, did anyone want to throw out a last thought on this guy or these 2000 guys and gals? Uh, this mm. movie's really fun. I was kind of surprised when I looked at the time, the amount of time on it, and it was an hour and 24 minutes because it doesn't feel 24 minutes longer than Blood Feast, but you know, well, like I think it does actually. <laughs> Yeah, but the pacing is pretty, very good for an exploitation film. I, I definitely yeah. have to give it that because. Uh... I mean, maybe they they may have spent a little bit too much time at the end explaining that all of them are ghosts, which we Worked could have out. figured out pretty quickly. Yeah. <laughs> that's fine. That's oh, fine. it that's, was fun watching the guy come out of the quicksand. That's my thought at the end. They're like, "What do you think we're gonna have in like a hundred years? Like rockets in the, in the main street?" I'm like, "So when yeah. they wake up from their ghost slumber, is it like they just have to like suddenly adapt to all this new technology like real quick?" Twenty sixty five. 
But it's like yeah. they're gonna wake up in 2065 and it'll just be a bunch of like Amazon Alexas that don't work and cheap drones <laughs> that don't work. And it'll be like Teslas that are just falling apart. <laughs> or they'll just burn alive. <laughs> That's also possible. Yeah, it'll just be like the sea level will just ri- have risen to where they're just like in, in like uh, two feet of water. They'll become in their, ghosts in their inland again. town. Yeah. yeah. So 2065 is definitely the time to remake this movie uh, for for yeah. those future yeah. generations. Absolutely. I, guess I, I don't think we want, we're going to be. Yeah, I don't think we're going to want to make that in our mid 80s. So it's not us, but hey, or maybe we well, will. We could, you never know. Maybe we I'll could be, be there. an uncomfortable old person in the town, being like, "What did I? Do? Oh, I forgot how violent this was." Uh. <laughs> I was just thinking before the podcast, like in 30 years, like. Nobody under the age of 50 will want to pod- be podcasting anymore because it won't be cool. So you'll have a bunch of like 80 year olds on mic. You know what I was thinking? That, that's a funny. <laughs> God, I shit myself. You know, <laughs> it's going to be all that in the podcasting world in like yeah, 30 the podcast years. will be like, you know, how long till I shit myself is the name of the podcast. <laughs> well, it's like really in the history of Earth, we've never had a field that is as oversaturated as podcasts. So anything could happen, really. How many non-diaper wearing people do you think shit themselves at Disney World every day? Uh, 80. Mm. <laughs> that's a low number. <laughs> I thought you were going to say that's a load. No, that's it a is. load number. That's 80 it's loads. A load number. Yeah, no, I think it would be more just because you've got the combination of terrible food um, and, you know, whatever anxiety people have. Heat and humidity. Yeah, and depending on paid... Oh, God, heat and humidity. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Can you imagine diarrhea? I mean, honestly, part of why I haven't been to Disney World in about 10 years is because I have like sort of baked in anxiety where I'm going to be like, okay, I spent $800 on this. I have to make this count. This had better be the best trip ever. And if it isn't, then I'm going to be really upset. And just even thinking about going through that in my brain, I'm just like, nah, man, I'm going to wait. And if I don't become rich, in the next like 30 years then i'm just not gonna go no uh, i i I had the best time at tokyo because i don't really go now just because you know Mm -hmm. whatever but you know well before i had a kid or let's say i'd I'd go there like you know i'd go to sea and land like each twice a year and so i was like i could kind of like screw around and just chill out you know that's the nice thing about i guess that's why people like land because you get an annual pass and you can just kind of hang out there you know i'm thinking about it man Matt, what was the name of that like monster demon thing, like hell thing they took out of the Japanese Disney? They took oh 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 um Chernabog. Chernabog? That's what it was. I think they've had Chernabog down there, yeah. Okay. Chernabog. Is that like a Is Chernobyl that... thing? I, 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 I... From Black Cauldron, right? Oh no, no, sorry, huh. I'm thinking of the Fantasia one, but it's almost the same design. You're you're right, it's a black cauldron one, which I okay. guess I could find the name for you. But, uh, we were yeah. just looking for it online and couldn't find because I remembered you sent me a video of it and a friend of mine was like, "What was it?" Because they're obsessed with weird ass Disney videos. And but so, yeah, I, I did that in in the in the in the reelsies and it was terrifying. Yeah, <laughs> like no, I remembered us talking about it and I said, "Yeah, I know somebody who saw it, but I can't remember." We were they were trying to Google it while we were talking and they couldn't find it. Right. Um, not not something yeah. on a actively recording podcasts that we need to do but still no i'm sitting here just i'm, I'm i guess just the horned king mm. is, that's that's what it says on wiki here so maybe Scary. the horned king so chernobog is a much better name king. yeah yeah ba- again basically the same design so whatever um but like yeah i have i've had a six flags season pass a few times and we all know that six flags is like way shittier than any disney or universal <laughs> thing but there's something really fun about going like 20 times in a year and you're getting on goliath which is like 220 feet in the air and you're just you've done it so many times that you're just sort of like laying back just chilling just like yeah the, just going up here going up into the uh death zone the monster mansion at six flags is a little bit like 2000 mm-hmm. maniacs where you're greeted by the <laughs> all the rednecks in a little town for their picnic and then uh, you're yeah, sent well, to hell was- for a while it was uh-huh. called the Monster Plantation when I was a kid. Yes, I know. I was I was trying to be like, a, you know. Pretty recently. I was trying not to say that, but. <laughs> yeah. It was called the Monster <laughs> Plantation until you were about 30 years old or yeah, 35. There was a, there was a documentary yeah. on YouTube that I saw about the creation of it. 
yeah, the old version was wild. It looked completely different when they built it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely it wild. Blocked that out of my mind. No, I, I definitely it, remember yeah, that it one. Yeah, did kind of look scarier, but um, but yeah, it was. I think it's the most animatronics in a ride outside of Disney ride, if I'm not mistaken. That that's, that's pretty close. I mean, the yeah, Knott's it's... Berry Farm used to have their Knott's Berry ride. The the berry there was a ride with bears animatronic bears, bears? i think that but, but oh, they don't have it anymore and they've they've resurrected it as a like a 3d screen ride which kind of blows mm. but yeah, no. not, <laughs> the thing that bums so me out fun. i was never um kennywood in uh, pittsburgh used to have garfield's nightmare which is this unauthorized garfield ride and that and one became like, better really... as it decomposed yeah <laughs> I, I i went to that i only went to kennywood for the first time a few years ago and it was already way too late they had taken that out but yeah, if you watch a video of that, watch one like later in its run when like the paint's chipping and things are falling apart, and it's it's even mm-hmm. better that way. Wow! Yeah. It's Depending like on the... when it was active, um, my wife might have gone on it because she's a, from Pittsburgh. No, I think it was the two nice. thousands when it was. Uh, you were already oh, married. Yeah, no. she she would have I... known the the old the old mill or whatever it was ride. It was like a different boat ride before. So, I like Pittsburgh. Yeah, it's all it's right. Cool. I haven't cool. been up there in a while. Probably, yeah, probably about 10 years, maybe. Well, you know, the people like in Pleasant city. Valley don't like Pittsburgh. They don't like no, the Pittsburgh don't. people. Sorry, I just thought I should, like, but, you, you know, know, dovetail it around the end. <laughs> uh, to be fair, a lot of Pittsburgh people are Trump supporters. So, <laughs> Oh, no, I, a lot of Trump I met supporters. some of them while I was up there. I mean, uh, yeah, the hills of Pennsylvania are not to be trifled with. You know, I, I, no. here's a good thing that we can add to that dovetail was I didn't realize there were um, rednecks outside of the South. But boy, oh they yeah. Have, well, no, it's they, like that David Cross routine, right? Where he's like, it "Was it? You know, I'm, I'm from Waynesboro, Georgia, and this is how we talk down there. I'm from Bozeman, mm-hmm. Montana. This is how we talk down here, up here. Fuck uh-huh. you. I'm from Nome, Alaska, and this is how we talk. That is the David Cross bit, yeah. just you know. So yeah, that's true. No, it's <laughs> yeah, very much so. No, I'm I'm in the mood now to watch Wrong Turn. I don't know if anyone watched the remake of Wrong Turn, but it is great. It is so good. Like it's so much better than any of the wrong turn movies which i'm a fan of one two and six but like the wrong turn remake is excellent and it's it's along the same lines where you have people going into the woods but you're dealing with hill people uh which are to me much more realistic than the ones <laughs> the movie. hill people it's like this this comes up on the podcast a lot i'm terrible at keeping up with sequels i saw the first wrong turn and loved it and never saw anything else i didn't even know there was six part two. Oh, you gotta okay. see part two. <laughs> do you have a All favorite right, police academy Huh? One? No, nah, that's the wrong answer. Favorite police academy. Why? You can't answer what? one. That's the only one that's like a legit movie. Why? <laughs> that's why I answered that. <laughs> uh, it was the one was the only one that never came on TV when I was a kid because I think the other ones are much easier to edit. The, oh, the and cheaper. Mild language. <laughs> cheaper <laughs> view, viewing rights. Yeah. <laughs> that. Yeah. Um. I guess we'll wrap it up. Uh. Andrew, what's on? What's going on in your world? This is like next week in your universe. Oh, oh it is okay. <laughs> well, um, everyone, my name is Andrew Shear. As always, wonderful to speak about the movies that people seem to really not like. That are, in fact, some of the the golden items in cinema history, as far as I'm concerned. My friends and I here in Athens, Georgia, make movies, and we are called Gonzorific. G O N Z O R I F F I C. Our next um, Showcase of Films will be our 15th year at Athens Cine as our church home. And we'll have such new uh, productions as Zombie Kini and Holy Foley, uh, which is a fake documentary about people that do Foley art for porn. Really funny. Um, And then I've also got uh, currently out now, you can get Bad Girl Dracula on the Reverie TV app, which you can subscribe to through Mr. Amazon Prime. And um, yeah, at some point, either in December or January, I'm putting out my very first book. It is called Everybody's E V E R Y B O D I E S. And it's an interview book about the human body and a lot of nude photography in it. Mark, I saw you take a swig of water. So you're in charge of the plug. Hey, I'm in charge of the plug. I want to plug Halloween. Everybody go out, get yourself a 12 foot skeleton, put it in front of your house. 50-foot Spock skeleton. 50-foot Spock skeleton? Yeah. What? Is that real? 
Got uh, spelling. A, well, fifty foot Spock is in the animated series, and then Lower Deck shows the fifty foot Spock skeleton. Oh, was that like this week? I haven't. I haven't nah, that was like that. last year. Okay, sorry, that was too too. Uh, I, I, I derailed you. I derailed your plug that didn't make sense. Hey, let's get back to it. Plugs. Check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash podcastio podcastius there's bonus content maybe you would like to give us some money for server bills we have them you have money thank you very much um check out other podcasts such as time enough podcast covering the twilight zone from front to back currently on one step beyond due to the uh strike we didn't talk a whole bunch about um we uh occult disney covering the connections between occult and Disney material podcast 1999 about the 1975 TV series space 1999 game game show game show about games Hyrule field report covering the legend of Zelda tears of the kingdom area by area boss by boss thing by thing uh, Luke loves Pokemon where Luke goes over every family of Pokemon in some order. That was so much more descriptive wants, than, than when I do it. I'm just like, that's ah, about Zelda. <laughs> I like to talk. I'm sorry. That's all I know. It's but I don't Zelda. apologize. It's about Zelda. But you're welcome. Yeah, it's about Zelda. It's okay. about the Zelda game that I that I played a lot of this <laughs> year. Very quickly. Um, currently, I'm playing Legend of Zelda Oracle of Seasons, which is also a banger. So all right. I'm that too. Um, all right. Well, thanks, y'all. And uh, stay out of the marsh, meaning stay out of the south. Yeah. <laughs> All right. When's the last time any of you watched Hee Haw? Uh, you where would one ago? watch? Where, right. where would one watch Hee Haw? I spoke I, to, I interviewed one of the original cast members. Cool. Oh, you can watch clips and shit on, if not full episodes on uh YouTube. I mean, you. Yeah, probably she ended up would, getting married you... to Kenny Rogers, and she's also in Rosemary's Baby. So she's got Whoa. some roaster money. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> it depends. Because Kenny Rogers didn't own roasters for all that. The roasters still exist. It's not Kenny Rogers roasters anymore, though. Oh, okay. But they did no. roast Kenny Rogers when he died. That was a good one. <laughs> yeah. And, and yeah, it was a, weird. They had everybody spit. just. Yeah, when you go there, you just like stand at a table and tell jokes about how shitty Kenny Rogers was. Yeah. Such then they feed you part of his body, or and the side orders are his two chocolate labs. I think most of my <laughs> it's likes. like barbecue. I've yep. added a few out of cur- courtesy because people ask me to like things on Facebook. But uh, at one point in time, all of my likes were Kenny Rogers based and, and, and they're still there. So, you know, favorite, mm. favorite TV movie, The Gambler, you know, uh, favorite song, The Gambler. No, I don't remember what the mm. shit uh, your favorite my, restaurant roasters. <laughs> my mom's favorite song is Islands in the Stream, which was Kenny Rogers. But also right. that was written by like the Bee Gees guy. Was yeah. it Andy Gibb? Sure. Oh, I just thought that song it. was about turds. <laughs> yeah, maybe it's, it sounds anyway. like a fucking Bee Gees song for sure. If you if you think about it for half a second. When I did the likes, I looked up the Kenny Rogers specifics, but I've since forgotten them, so I don't remember exactly what my Kenny Rogers likes were. Roasters. Well, yeah, that was obviously there. <laughs> I think there's still one in Singapore. I think there's like an actual Kenny Rogers roaster in like Singapore. Weirdly enough, like somewhere in well, Southeast remember- Asia. For a while, they had a, a combination at Lenox Mall. They had a combination Kenny Rogers roasters and Nathan's hot dogs. Mm, <laughs> I mean, I would brain. always go there and eat hot dogs. Yeah, as well, say you go for the hot dogs and then given that choice. Yeah, no, he, he lived in, uh, I guess he lived, he had a very huge house in Athens somewhere because his um, ex wife, Marianne Rogers, she um, still lives there. Well, he uh, he's buried in Oakland Cemetery now. That right. Like, pretty weird that they still have space there. But anyway, well, they did. They, really t- they got they, really they got took space for Kenny Rogers. Yeah. <laughs> Your statement was funnier than mine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Not by much, dude. <laughs> <laughs> that says there are 156 Kenny Rogers roasters. In like what Singapore? There's the one in Thailand. And fuck it. Okay, so I was right about the Southeast Asia thing. <laughs> I mean. Yeah, it looks like Malaysia, Philippines, Singapore, China, Indonesia, India, Brunei, C- Cambodia, United Arab Emirates, and Thailand. There you I go. Like, I like that that's where the spirit of Kenny Rogers lives now. That just <laughs> spread amongst <laughs> Southeast Asian countries. 
Yeah, that, yeah like you're, you're in the, the back jungles of Thailand. You suddenly come up uh, about a, a town populated by 2000 Kenny Rogers. Mm. Wow. Oh that, Which Kenny like... Rogers? 80s Kenny Rogers or like weird ass plastic surgery? Well, I could have a hundred of each. Oh, in, in, in December 1992, <laughs> Cluckers, a minor player in the roasted chicken market, sued Kenny Rogers Roasters, claiming the chain had copied its recipes and menus. Mm. Cluckers. They bought Cluckers out. I just want to say Cluckers because it's fun. There should be a Cluckers in Fuck It. They clucked yeah, them. I hope so. <laughs> uh, let's go I to Cluckers. The... Let's go to fucking eat some Cluckers. <laughs> <laughs> You get two hour lunch today. Yeah, we're going over to f- fucking eating some cluckers. We're gonna have cluckers and fuck it. Wow, I'm looking at one of the Malaysia ones, and it's got a big giant sign, but then like little tiny booths under it, and does then there's have... like an ad for coffee. But does, it, is it roasters. just roasters, or does it still include? It Kenny? says Kenny Rogers Roasters. Okay, good, good, good. I, I thought the Southeast Asia ones were still branded. So I mean, if I... anywhere karaoke is popular, you're gonna get some Kenny Rogers fans. You know. I've never done Kenny Rogers for uh, karaoke. God, it comes up a haven't. lot. A lot of duets featured Kenny. The best duet I ever saw was two um, creepy, drunk Japanese men doing a duet like in each other's face of a whole new world. Oh, nice! <laughs> and, and and really, and they and and of course they 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 didn't speak English that well either. So it was with a very heavy accent. <laughs> yeah, that's. I mean, I guess. Yeah, one can only hope to find a recording of that. They were singing it to each other because none of the women there were willing to duet with them. <laughs> I mean, I part of me definitely, part of me definitely wants to see someone get like violently assaulted for singing my way. Even though <laughs> oh, I don't yeah, think that's the Philippines thing. That. Yeah. yeah, it's a, <laughs> South South Asian general, but especially Philippines. Okay, but I think I like twelve people thing. are dead from that. Like it's like literal. Like a decent amount of murder has happened because of that. Like, and the the funny thing is, apparently, it all happened without anybody knowing about any of the other ones. You know, it wasn't like, "Hey, I heard I get to kill someone." Who sings this? It just like it, it hit like this human impulse. Yeah, maybe the last three murders they knew about the previous ones. I, but... I fucking hate that song. I've never <laughs> liked it. I think it's terrible. The Homer Simpson version is fun. I don't know if I even. Oh yeah, well no, that's a different song. Oh, that was a very like that. good year. I don't You're like right. that song. I don't like that either, but I think it's better than my way. Okay. <laughs> yeah, good point. Uh I guess we'll wrap this thing up. I'll hit the oh, I didn't hit the recording button yet. So someone's gonna hear all this okay. ram- ramble ramble.